So far, we've discovered four concurrencies related to a triangle that are each the concurrency of three lines meeting in a common intersection point. What's really cool is that among those concurrencies is another concurrency of their own that we'll see in this bonus content. This is not something we'll be able to prove in this chapter. We may be able to do it later on in the course. But I thought now was a good time to introduce this really remarkable concurrency of concurrencies related to a triangle. So this concurrency begins with us taking the first of our triangle concurrencies, the circumcenter. We'll call it O. And remember, the circumcenter is the concurrency of a triangle's three perpendicular bisectors of its sides. So start with that point. Continue with the in-center, call it I. Remember, the in-center is the concurrency of a triangle's three angle bisectors. So now I have the circumcenter and the in-center both sketched in, those two points uh, in my triangle. And for my third point, I'm going to take the orthocenter. Remember, the orthocenter is the concurrency of the triangle's three altitudes. So I take the altitudes, the perpendiculars dropped from one vertex to its opposite side. Those three altitudes meet at a common concurrency point called the orthocenter. So here I have three points, the circumcenter, the incenter, and the orthocenter. In general position, we cannot expect three points in the plane to be collinear. But what's remarkable is that these three points are guaranteed to be collinear for any given triangle, ABC. They will lie on a common line. So the circumcenter, incenter, and orthocenter, I can draw one line that passes through all three of those center concurrency points related to a triangle. That line that I can draw through these three points is called the Euler line of the triangle ABC. Now, it's called the Euler line when it's actually well-defined. And it's worth thinking about, is there a circumstance under which a triangle does not have a well-defined Euler line? One of the ways I like to think about it is that if I connect the dots along this line, if I measure how far apart in this example the circumcenter is from the orthocenter, how long that line is, is a measure somehow of how skewed my triangle is how far apart the angles are from one another, how, how different the lengths of the sides are from one another. You'll see that the more triangles you draw and the more Euler lines that you construct, the more that you make the three sides of the triangle very different and the three angles of the triangle very different, the longer that that Euler line will get. And there's one and only one case in which the Euler line is not well defined. The only way for three points not to have a unique common line uh, that they lie on if they are collinear, is to make those three points identical, make them lie on top of one another. So the Euler line theorem guarantees these three points are collinear. They always lie on a common line. But that line is only unique if those three points are not all the same. If these three points are identical, if they all lie on top of one another, then this triangle is not going to have an Euler line, or the distance from the circumcenter to the orthocenter will be zero. And so it's worth thinking, what circumstances make that happen? What kinds of triangles satisfy that the circumcenter, the incenter, and the orthocenter are all the same point? In general position, this won't be the case. But there is one important family of triangles under which that does happen. And those triangles don't have well-defined Euler lines.